Hello and good afternoon. CTS 266, Section 840 students for the Spring 2016 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. This is the Cisco Networking Academy CCMP Switch course, and this afternoon's video tutorial is going to be a tutorial on IP service level agreements, and we're going to be doing this through the uh, lens of discovery activity number 13, which is IPSLA, and we're going to specifically be looking at the ICMP Echo. Uh, SLA and this is a great activity to kind of ease us into uh, some more difficult configurations that we're going to encounter uh, in one of the uh, upcoming labs. So uh, those of you that were in the route course with me last semester, uh, we also had a, a similar activity where we did uh, IPSLA, uh, but we tied it in with performance based routing or PBR. Uh, so here in the switch course, again, this is just kind of a uh, a nice intro activity here where literally we don't have much going on other than uh, the headquarters uh, multi-layer switch and the branch multi-layer switch. So let's go ahead and jump in here on step one on the HQ multi-layer switch. Let's go from user exec to privilege exec. Let's say show IP interface brief and see what we're looking at here. So it looks like we've got a single routed interface. If I were to say show run include routing. Uh, we don't have IP routing enabled, but we do have that interface configured. What if I were to say show IP route? All right, so it simply shows that we've got a, uh, a static route uh, that basically points to 192.168.1.2. So here's what we're going to be doing. Uh, we're going to go ahead and define an ICMP Echo SLA, uh, and we are going to set it up so that it pings 172.16.22.254. And my guess is is that this branch router here, if we say show IP route, exactly, this is our 172.16.22.254 as you can see right here. So basically, uh, we're going to be making sure that we can ping that address. And let's give that a try right now, 172.16.22.254. So we do have end-to-end -end reachability. So let's go ahead and jump in here. Now remember, there's a number of reasons that you would want to configure IPSLA, and typically, IPSLA is going to be used to measure uh, reachability. It could be used to measure jitter. So remember that voice and video uh, is overwhelmingly UDP packets, and so you may want to be measuring voice uh, traffic or uh, video traffic and what that might look like in your environment. And so IPSLA is great for that. It's also great to test reachability, and then, like I had mentioned earlier, you could use policy-based routing to make a decision based off of uh, an upstream interface that might be tracked. And then policy-based routing may take a, uh, take a step to reroute your traffic uh, around what could be a possible failure upstream. So from global config, we simply say IPSLA. If I put the question mark in here, you can see the entry numbers. We've got quite a few uh, uh, numbers here that we can use, right? So this is going to support quite a few uh, service level agreement statement. So IPSLA, and we'll just simply keep it simple, we'll say IPSLA1. Now, once we get into the IPSLA uh, sub configuration mode, here is where you see a list of what we're going to be able to configure uh, service level agreements for. So we could do DHCP, uh, we could make it a, uh, a DNS operation, an FTP operation. The HTTP one uh, might be popular because it's one thing to ping a web server, but it's certainly totally different to actually connect to the web server with HTTP. And SLA allows you to connect because just because I can ping the web server doesn't necessarily mean uh, that Apache is running in the background like it's supposed to and it's serving up web pages. Um, we've got the ICMP Echo, and again, that's the one we're interested in. Uh, Path Echo, Path Jitter, TCP Connect, right? We could set it up uh, to where we try to initiate a TCP connection. And then we've got UDP Echo and UDP Jitter. And again, UDP Echo and UDP Jitter are inextricably linked to uh, voice and video traffic measurements. So let's go ahead here and drop in our ICMP Echo. And we're going to be pinging, whoops, 172. And if I do a question mark, you'll see this is going to be the destination. So who are we going to be sending the ICMP Echo UDP packet to? Uh, 172.16.22.254. Now, 
I could also put down the source interface or the uh, source address. However, in the scenario that we have here, there's only a single address. If we had a loopback address uh, that maybe was being advertised out, who knows, into OSPF or EIGRP, uh, we could uh, use that loopback address. But here, uh, there's only a simple uh, single interface that is uh, set up. So we're simply going to use that. So ICMP Echo 172.16.22.254. So, so far, we've got an IPSLA uh, statement, or I should say uh, IPSLA test type, which is going to be uh, number one. And we're going to be pinging 172.16.22.254. So the next thing that we want to do, if I do a question mark, you can see we've got some other uh, information here. So tag... If I wanted to tag it, what I could do at a later date uh, is I could have SNMP pull this information and the tag, uh, which is user defined, uh, could be used to identify things. So owner, right? Now this isn't part of the lab, but owner is another one where I can say it's just basically the owner entry. So let's go ahead and say created on four, what is today? Nine, four, nine, two, oh, one, six. Um, by TP Bonfi, and we are testing reachability, and who knows, maybe you want to put in here the change number, CCR number, 8675309, right, under which you're doing your work. And so now we've got that in there. If I put tag in a question mark, you can see this is just simply a tag string. Uh, so let's just say ICMP echo SLA, right? Um, what else do we have here? So we've got our frequency. So I can go ahead and uh, dictate what the frequency is going to be, uh, the history, uh, the type of service, right? If we're trying to do any kind of quality of service, if I was testing, uh, let's say, voice, right? If I was testing voice, I might want to put in some uh, QoS settings here uh, to make sure that only that traffic uh, is being used. And you can see that IPSLA is VRF aware. So I could actually tie that uh, to a VRF. All right, so we've added some of the additional information. Let's say do show run section SLA, and there you go. So if somebody else were to pull this up, they'd have an idea as to uh, what type of SLA it is. It's an ICMP echo, what address we're trying to ping, who created it, uh, and we've got a special tag there. So in case we try to pull this information, you know, with our solar wind server or something like that. Uh, that we get a little additional information. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to schedule uh, the SLA, right? Because we've created it, but yet we need to have a schedule on which it is going to run. So we're going to say IPSLA schedule. I do a question mark. And remember, this number needs to correspond to the IPSLA number we used here. Because remember, we're basically saying schedule this IPSLA. Well, what number SLA? In our case, we're looking at number one. Now, I can have it uh, have a start time if I wanted to. I could say it recurs, uh, you know, at some point every day. But we're just simply going to say life, and I could give the life in seconds as to how long it's going to run. By default, it runs for 3,600 seconds. Or I could simply say forever, which means we want it to run forever. And then start time, I could put in now, pending, after a certain time. So we'll just throw in here now. All right. So the schedule's been created. We've got our IPSLA configured um, in a couple of key, uh, key notes here. So when we saw the age out, right, when we got down to the schedule here under life forever, and how long. Remember that the age out keyword is how long data is going to be kept. If I don't put anything in there, uh, it's going to be kept for the life of the SLA. Uh, same thing with the recurring keyword. We could schedule the test to run like one o'clock every day, right? So, and if we don't say, if we don't use recurring, when we say forever start time now, that means run forever, right? Starting right now. And this is just going to continually run. Okay, so, and we can see this information if I were to, let's go ahead and say end. We'll say end, and if I say show IPSLA config, we can see that we've got our SLA information here for IPSLA once. Let's take a look at that real quick. 
So here's where we ran. Where was it at? I don't see where I typed in. There it is right there. Show IP SLA. Sorry about that. All right. So here's where we ran. Show IP SLA. So we're using the Infrastructure Engine 3, the entry number. This is IP SLA 1. And then here is my owner statement, right? Again, really great to put this in here so that someone coming behind you has an idea as to what is going on. Like, what were you doing? They can go take a look at the CCR and see what was he working on. The tag, ICMP Echo SLA, so that an SNMP uh, manager can get that information. Timeout is five seconds. The type of operation it's going to perform is an ICMP Echo. The target address that we configured is the multi-layer switch on the other side. No type of service, right? No QoS information. Request size, 28. Verify data, no, we're not verifying anything. So then here's our schedule. So the operation frequency is every 60 seconds. So by default, every 60 seconds, we're gonna be sending an ICMP echo. Start time has already passed because we said start now. So there is no group schedule. There's no randomly scheduled, right? That's why those are false. My lifetime is forever. And so here we see the age out, right? For the data that's being collected, I said never. So the, for the life of this SLA, that data is gonna be kept. Recurring, nope, it runs always, right? So it's not that it's recurring, it's running always. So that's why we are false. Status of entry, SNMP row status is active. So here's our threshold, distribution statistics, uh, number of statistic hours kept, two, Distribution buckets, one, 20 second, or 20 milliseconds uh, for the distribution statistics. And then we've got the history statistics down here. So this is our SLA. So now let's go ahead and clear the screen here. And we're going to take a look at show IP SLA statistics to see how many times this is run. Well, remember, we're only going every 60 seconds. So there's only been four successes. If I wanted to configure it to take place more often, and I could simply do this, if we did another SLA, so IP SLA 2, right? And we do the question mark here, we see we're gonna do an ICMP echo, and we're gonna do 172 dot, and what was the address? 16.22.254, excuse me. So now that I'm in here, see that frequency up there, right? So I can specify that I want this to happen every five seconds. So when I say frequency five, remember before we didn't do this, I never, I didn't say anything about the frequency, but now I put frequency five in here. And so this kind of changes things. So what was the default? The default was every 60 seconds. But now that I've thrown the frequency in here, it's going to be every five seconds. So let's go ahead and schedule this. So IPSLA schedule two, and we're going to say life is forever start time now. And let's go ahead and say show IP SLA. Whoops. Show IP SLA. Uh, I didn't want statistics. I wanted. Where were we at? Configuration. So here is IP SLA 2. So you see the difference here, right? The operation frequency here is every five seconds we're going to be sending that ICMP ping packet, right? So now when I say show IP SLA stats, whoops, show IP SLA stats or statistics, uh, you can see that what's going to happen is SLA2, right, operation ID2, uh, we see some statistics here, right? Latest round trip time is one millisecond, right? So it's taking us one millisecond. So if we were setting this up to measure uh, UDP jitter or UDP uh, delay, we would be getting those statistics. And that's why you would run this is to get an idea as to what's going to happen if you were to put traffic onto the network of that type, right? So UDP traffic, uh, like I said, if you're checking for HTTP reachability. So, but again, the frequency, we can tweak the frequency uh, so that we end up with a better um, sample size, right? Because every five seconds is a little better than every 60 seconds. So um, show IP SLA application so this is interesting, right? Because this is actually going to tell you the capabilities 
that your device has. So this is probably, ironically, it's the last thing that they show you, but this is probably one of the first things you're gonna wanna run. So if we were to take a look at a real uh, Cisco device here, and this is just the 3750 switch, if I were to say show IPSLA application, let's take a look here. So IP service level agreement technologies, infrastructure versions. So engine two here, and if we go back over here, I think it said engine three. So you can see where uh, the engine on the IOU is a little more recent than the engine here on the 3750. And again, the 3750 is pretty old. So let's take a look. We've got uh, DHCP, DNS, Echo, FTP, HTTP, Jitter, MPLS Jitter, Path Echo, Path Jitter, TCP Connect, UDP Echo. And if we come back over here, you can see that there's a whole host of things that are supported over here that are not supported on this legacy 3750. Again, it's a pretty nice little output here telling me, hey, your system estimated system max number of entries, 6,623. So you wanna be careful if you're making entries there. Take a look at it here. Uh, oops, sorry, max entries, 38,000, right? So big difference uh, between the IOU and a, a physical, uh, Oh, I'm sorry, actually, what do we got here? Yeah, same number here, 38,314, because we've already configured a few. All right, so that gives you a good idea about uh, IPSLA, how you create the SLA. And again, we're checking it. And sort of contextually in the lab, it's not really clear, okay, well, I'm setting up this SLA, and it's pinging across the cloud here. But, I mean, what good is that? Why do I want to do that? And again, we talked about some of those reasons. Uh, if you lose reachability, maybe you're doing uh, PBR, policy-based routing, and you want PBR to make a decision based off uh, the SLA. Uh, or you could set uh, the SLA up, again, voice and video, to check to see what it's going to look like with that kind of UDP traffic and what the latency will look like. So we have a lab that's a little more involved than what we're doing here, but these are fantastic activities to kind of ease you into the technology, and then we take our reading, we build on that reading, and then we move into the Netacad lab. All right, guys. Well, that is it. That wraps up uh, discovery activity number, is it 16? I can't remember. 14, 13. No, discovery activity number 13 on IPSLA echo configuration. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on Monday night.